Hey friends, Ash here with GenSense, and today is another one of those days, a first impression day. I've been doing a lot of first impressions lately, which is something I never did in the past, and there's a reason for that. Previously, I would get in a haul of fragrances, and then I would just do like a, a fragrance haul video and be like, hey, I got this, hey, I got that, but I wouldn't give impressions on all of them, and there would be a lot of fragrances that I'd end up getting in a haul that I would never do a fragrance review on, so then people would see them in a haul and have no clue how I thought about them. This way, at least I can say how I feel about it, even if it's just an initial impression, which down the road might change. But if I do have a big change in how I feel about a fragrance, like if I say I hate it and then I end up loving it down the road, or I love it initially and then hate it down the road, I'll try to do a video to let you guys know that. Kind of an update or a full review or something like that. I actually got a bunch of fragrances in at the same time from Europe, and I've already done a first impression on a few of those. I've got a couple more of those right here. And then I have some that I bought from FragranceNet, just in a, a big bundle, because they were all cheapies. Now I'm not gonna be able to cover all of these in this video, because then it's gonna run really, really long, but I'll give you guys an idea of what I'm planning on some of these if I don't do a first impression right here. Anyway, let's jump into this right now. So the first first impression is actually just what's inside here which is Carolina Herrera Bad Boy. This was sent to me by Stevie G, who you may know as Red Adolescence. So thanks to Steven for sending this to me. I actually have a bottle of this on order, it just isn't here yet, but he sent me a decant so I could kind of check it out before the bottle gets here, which probably should have checked this out before I ordered it. I'm gonna keep things pretty brief here with this one. I've worn this twice now. The first time I sprayed it on, first thing that came to my mind was chocolate immediately, and also Tonka. This one is centered around those notes. It's the main thing I pick up from this fragrance. It's the main thing I remember from the fragrance. Heading into the mid, it has a little bit of a chocolate cookie kind of vibe. There's also a little bit of an Ambroxan-ish amber wood in this fragrance, and it reminds me also of Emporio Armani Stronger With You Intensely. Now the notes aren't the same as that fragrance, but it definitely gives off a similar vibe. It's gonna be used in similar situations as that one. And in my initial wearings with Bad Boy, it did not have great performance. Performance. Not exactly what I would call completely weak, but average at best. That could be because I'm spraying it from a small atomizer, but I'll test this one out more over the next couple days. Now let's get into some actual opening and smelling here. Two of the ones I'll definitely be opening are this one, Calvin Klein Eternity for Men, Eau de Parfum, the new one, and Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau which is the new Lamal flanker. And I've got five other fragrances right here that I'll briefly talk about, if not crack into. I'll go with this one first, Eternity Eau de Parfum by Calvin Klein. The original Calvin Klein Eternity for men was a massive release. Lots and lots of guys still wear that one and still love that one. I have it in my collection though. I don't really reach for that ever nowadays, but still interested to check this one out. So let's open it up. And here we have it, Eternity for Men, Eau de Parfum. I'll show you guys the box really quickly. Eternity for Men, Eau de Parfum by Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein there on the top of the box. Your ingredient information on the back and your badge code is down here. Comes in your standard Eternity bottle, only with a darker green fragrance on the inside. I'm sure all of you are aware of how the Eternity bottle looks, but I'll bring it up for a closer look for you anyway. There it is, Eternity Eau de Parfum by Calvin Klein. Atomizer right up here in the top, just like on the other bottles. And there's your sticker on the bottom. This is a fragrance that, believe it or not, I've actually had multiple people reach out to me about wanting to know my thoughts on this fragrance. Now I finally have it in, so let's give it a spray. Let's let this settle for one second. This comes across initially to me as a more mature fragrance. So it has a definite fougere kind of feel to it. Uh, green, you pick up cypress, pretty much immediately. I mean, 30, 45 seconds in, you can already pick up the cypress popping off here, one of the main notes. It's got a little bit of apple off the top, but the apple doesn't come across as strongly as the lavender and the cypress do. So while there is a little bit of sweetness in the opening from the apple, it's not really strong, it's not very prominent. This one does smell pretty similar to how they're kind of pitching it, which is like a modernized take on the original Eau de Toilette, but not too modern. It definitely comes across like it would be better suited on somebody 30 and up. If you're a fan of the original Eternity, I imagine that you'll like this one as well. For most of the younger guys out there, guys who are looking for blue fragrances, guys who are looking for supreme compliments and stuff like that, maybe won't be for them. But if you enjoy a slightly modern fougere with lavender, cypress, little bit of leather, and some herbal undertones as well, you should check that one out, it's not bad. Next up, let's open up Lebo, and this is a huge can. 
I know that George from The Fragrance Apprentice actually really likes this fragrance. He's talked about it a few times on his channel now. George is a cool guy. If you're unaware of his channel, check it out, The Fragrance Apprentice on YouTube. Check out that massive can of Le Beau. A little info on the bottom of the can. Let's open this one up. I'm trying to do this on camera where you can actually see it. Oh, there we go. Not the coolest way to receive a fragrance. <laughs> the atomizer was loose in there and just fell right off along with the little pin that you stick in there. So I have to put this back together. This can apparently took a heavy, heavy, heavy hit in transit because the atomizer is warped on this one. Check that out. It took a heavy hit. <laughs> it's a big ding in the atomizer right there. So hopefully this is still gonna work. I'll try to squeeze this a little bit. And so as you can see, it sits down in here and pops out like so. I'm gonna have to just press this down and... Okay. So it sprays, but it, <laughs> it feels a little weird when you press it in. It kind of wobbles to the side as you press it down from where it took that massive shot. Almost good as new. I'll give you a closer look at this bottle. It looks similar to the, I think, 2016 release, the Eau de Parfum. I think it was Jean-Paul Gaultier, Les Essences. Eau de Parfum or Les Essences de Parfum, something like that. But here you go. We've got this sculpted body and this time he's got a leaf covering up his junk. You can see here on the back, he's definitely been working out his lats. You just pull the pin, similar to Spice Bomb, only without as much decoration. And then you give it a spray. So let's check this one out as well. Okay, so it's tropically sweet, at least off this tester strip. And this is gonna be another one I just spray on skin. Forget it. Tester strips suck. Let that settle for just a second. Settle down. That is interesting. I'm not sure how to feel about that right off the bat. Huh. <laughs> it has some almost like a toffee cookie kind of thing in the opening, which I know there's supposed to be coconut in here and tonka. Really sweet in the opening, kind of a synthetic sweetness, but it smells nice. It's not coming across overly cloying. Uh, there's not a whole bunch of that like synthetic bubblegum kind of thing going on here that's really popular nowadays. I don't really get that. It's a little bit creamy as well. The coconut here is not coming across how I anticipated. So a lot of times when fragrance companies put a coconut in a fragrance, it comes across like sunscreen. So a lot of times, probably nine times out of 10 actually, when coconut is in there, it's gonna come across a little like sunscreen or suntan lotion or something like that. And that is not here. I mean, sometimes you'll have coconut in fragrances like uh, Virgin Island water, and then it can come across tropical. So I guess not all the time sunscreeny, but fairly often. As it starts to settle down, you know, 10 minutes in or so now, the coconut does come out a little bit more. Uh, the tonka kind of overwhelms it at first, along with a little bit of citrus, but now the coconut is becoming more noticeable. It's a little bit light, it's mixing in with the tonka. I would say of the three notes that I know are supposed to be in here, and I'll have to look this up more later to see if there are more listed notes, but uh, tonka is going to be what's most prominent. Probably tonka and then coconut, and then the citrus I only picked up in the opening. There's not a ton of citrus at this point, it's just, just a little bit kind of on the edges. Just initial impressions, this smells nice, but it does not blow me away. I'll give that more wear and kind of see where it takes me down the road. And as can often happen off the tester strip, this fragrance, Libo, is much sweeter. Off skin, the Tonka comes out a lot more. Off the tester strip, the citrus and the coconut come out much, much more. Way more, way more off the tester strip. And Eternity, going back to that for just a second here, again, off a tester strip, the green facets of this fragrance have really shown up. Lavender, sage, cypress, very apparent. That apple, gone, completely gone. It still, to me, smells a little more like a mature fragrance than it does a youthful fragrance, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Off the tester strip, there's a little bit of just faint kind of soapiness. It smells good, though. Okay, so these other fragrances that I wanna talk about, really briefly here. I picked up both of these. These are both from Karl Lagerfeld, Bois de Yuzu and Bois de Cedar. I reviewed Bois de Vetiver, which is in this line maybe a year ago. It was a really, really nice fragrance that you could pick up for around 20 bucks. So I wanted to see if these are any good as well, since they're all kind of in the same line. I would open these up and smell them right now, but the video would end up running 20 minutes long. If you're interested in these, let me know and I can do another first impression, crack these open, give them a smell, see how they are, and then if they're any good, maybe follow up with a, a review later on. Also picked up these two, which are pretty interesting to me. These are Banana Republic fragrances. 
This one is dark cherry and amber. This one, tobacco and tonka bean. What's weird about these is there's basically no information that I can find online about these right now. These look to be new entries in the Banana Republic Icon line. Some of those fragrances are very popular. I actually own, I think, the entire line. I just went ahead and grabbed a couple so I can show you what I'm talking about. This one is Neroli Woods. This one is 78 Vintage Green. These are fantastic summertime fragrances. Really, really, really nice. So maybe you've seen these online, either in reviews or in Banana Republic stores or something like that. The presentation is pretty good on these. Fragrances are actually really nice, much, much higher quality than you would expect from just a mall clothing store. They're actually really good. So I saw these on FragranceNet and I figured they had to be from this line, but there was never an announcement made on these that I could find. I checked Banana Republic's website as of this video, nothing on there. I searched for these on Google, nothing other than FragranceNet. And these aren't the only ones. There are actually a couple other ones that I saw as well. Uh, one was based around pepper, the other based around cardamom, and they had floral notes attached to them, but I forget exactly what they were. Cardamom and gardenia, maybe, and then peony and pepper. I think I could be wrong, but I think that's what those were. These two looked more interesting to me though. Dark cherry and amber, tobacco and tonka bean. And then the last thing, craze. Blue. I reviewed Craze Fresh and hated it. It is straight up, absolute, unequivocal shit. And then the original Craze is a pretty good clone of Parfums de Marley Pegasus, which smells similar to Christian Dior Hypnotic Poison. This was cheap. I added it to the cart, and I'm gonna review this for better or for worse. So either our moth is going to redeem themselves with Craze Blue, or another box is going to get annihilated in a fit of rage. I'm just playing. Seriously though, I do want to give Armoff another chance with the craze line, so that's why I bought this. So guys, let me know if you're interested in yet another unboxing first impression, and I'll hit these two and these two on the same one. Just get these four knocked out all at once. This one is special. This one I'm saving for a review. So be on the lookout for that. Craze blue, maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. I've intentionally not looked up anything on this fragrance about what it's supposed to be a clone of, if it's supposed to be a clone. I don't know, I don't even know what the notes are. I'm assuming since it's blue, it's going to be fresh, right? Sporty, summery, something. As always, thanks for hanging out with me. Be on the lookout for some craze in your future. And let me know if you want me to review these two, Le Beau or Eternity, Eau de Parfum. And I'll see you guys again next time with another fragrance video. See you guys.